call to order the meeting of April 11th of the Planning Commission of the Town of Los Gatos. Um, the Planning Commission is appointed by the Town Council in charge with responsibility on behalf of the Council for land use planning uh, consistent with state laws, ordinances of the town, and other kind of guidelines. We welcome all the members of the public to participate in the deliberations of the Planning Commission, both those that are in person and those that are watching on TV. We, however, do not uh, encourage the participation of cell phones in the deliberations of the Planning Commission, so we would ask anyone in attendance who might have a cell phone with them to please turn them off. Um, um, we will, in encouraging participation in the Planning Commission, there are in the uh, back parts of the uh, bench seating in the area, yellow cards if you would like to either participate during the open communication period of time where you can speak on any topic of your pleasure that's not on the agenda tonight. We'd ask that you fill out a card and pass it to the recording secretary uh, with your name um, and address on it. If you would like to speak on one of the agendized items tonight, um, we'd also ask you to do the same thing. Um, Madam Planning Manager, roll call. Commissioner Sayoc? Here. Commissioner Bourgeois? Here. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner O'Donnell? Here. Vice Chair Erickson? Here. And Commissioner um, Talisfor and Chair Jensen have an excused absence. Uh, please join uh, Commissioner O'Donnell in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The minutes for the March 14th meeting of the Commission were distributed uh, in advance of the meeting. Um, are there any corrections, additions to the minutes? The hey, chair would then invite a motion for adoption of the minutes. I'll move the adoption of the minutes. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All aye. opposed? The minutes are adopted unanimously. We have no written communications for this evening's meeting. We know, have no requested continuances. continuances. There are several committees that the members of the planning, affiliated committees that the members of the Planning Commission uh, are participate on. There are three specific ones that we would like to report on this evening for the public and for the information for other members of the Commission. First is the General Plan Committee, Commissioner Sayok. Thank you. Um, the General Plan Committee did meet this earlier today at 5 o'clock. Uh, there were several things that we reviewed, the first being modifications to the town's uh, codification of the state density bonus law. Uh, this was language that staff presented that the General Plan Committee had a chance to review. This, uh, there were a couple comments made. Town staff will take those into consideration, will review and redraft, and ultimately this language will return to the Planning Commission and the Town Council for their review. We also continued our review of our affordable housing overlay zones. Um, those are design guidelines and development standards that apply to specific sites that we designate um, as, as sites that can have this overlay zone. Today we reviewed South Bay, which is a parcel of land sandwiched between Knoll Street and the Los Gatos Creek Trail, immediately north of uh, Highway 85. And we also reviewed, and um, uh, it's called Oka Road A. It's a site off of Oka Road, immediately north of JCC. And so those were the two that we reviewed, and there are two more sites that are still pending. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sayak. The North 40 specific plan, Commissioner Bourgeois. Thank you, Mr. Erickson. The North 40 specific plan advisory committee held uh, a meeting on Thursday, March 29th uh, at the police operations building. This was the first meeting uh, that the committee held since the town council had adopted the new vision statement for the North 40. So we reviewed that and uh, most of the meeting was taken up with reviewing of uses uh, that would be compatible with that vision statement. So we went through a table of uses uh, that would be, that the committee would think would be permitted. Uh, 
in that zone given the new vision statement and those that potentially would require a CUP. So it was quite a, a long and spirited meeting. And if anyone else is interested in uh, participating in the North 40 plan update, the next meeting I believe is April 24th at 6 p.m., which is a Tuesday night. And I think the location is still pending. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. The uh, Historic Preservation Committee meeting met this afternoon. Uh, with one item at 45 West Main Street, a simple uh, request to add an awning, which was approved simply and quickly. We would now invite any members of the public in attendance to speak for up to three minutes on any topic other than one that is agendized. We, I don't see any cards, and we don't see anyone rushing forward to talk about the Giants or any other topic that's not agendized for tonight, so we'll move on to uh, the initial public hearing, uh, agenda item number one, which is a, uh, an application for a conditional use per permit at 640 Blossom Hill Road. We have a staff report. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, staff has nothing to add to the staff report, but it is available for questions. Are there questions? Commissioner O'Donnell. I want to ask a question about the parking there. That is, in my experience, a rather difficult parking lot, both from access and from parking. Uh, there is a, um, an offer by this applicant this evening to uh, expand, if I can phrase that properly, a few parking spaces there to help with some of the flow problem, I guess. I'm wondering if the staff has reviewed that offer and decided whether the offer could be expanded. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's not much that can be done to solve the problem, but the offer looks like it would help solve part of the problem. So I'm just wondering when you evaluated that, did it, uh, what did it appear to you as to what would happen if the number of spaces being opened up that is made deeper were to be expanded? Uh, the community benefit was not fully evaluated by staff, given that it is a decision of a deciding body and an offer from the applicant. Uh, however, it was a suggestion from staff, uh, given the known difficulty that people do have circulating the parking lot. Uh, if you wanted to uh, discuss the additional grading for the whole entire length of the property, you'd want to talk to the applicant. Well, what I'm trying to get from you at the moment and I would like to think you considered this. Um, I'm not expecting the applicant to change the whole parking lot. However, the applicant, apparently voluntarily, uh, to come up with a community benefit, has volunteered to make some changes. That came before you. Are you saying you didn't evaluate that offer at all? No. No meaning you didn't evaluate it? Um, no, we did not not evaluate it. So we did consider it. Um, it was a suggestion from staff, given that there is a known difficulty in circulation, but we don't make full evaluations of the community benefit. You suggested this? Uh, essentially, yes. Um, offered it as a difficult scenario for that particular shopping center. And did you suggest the exact number of spaces we're talking about this evening? No. So you suggested that maybe, perhaps you could tell me what you suggested. Can I ask for a clarification? Are you asking if staff believes that this improvement would improve the parking or if this was, how did we evaluate the offering? It's totally in itself if, if this is. Well, actually, I'm a little confused at the moment. I, I, there's, there's an offer. It looks like it would help the situation. It seemed to me that uh, more is better than less in this particular case. And therefore, I was concerned, I was just, I was interested in how the number was arrived at. And so far I've heard that the staff made a suggestion to the applicant. The applicant responded apparently affirmatively. But I don't hear any numbers in there. So I don't know whether the staff said, I don't know what the staff said. How did the staff make a suggestion that re resulted in the, what we have tonight? Staff did not suggest a number of parking spaces that would be affected by regrading that portion of the parking lot. Uh, we did bring up the issue that there has been a number of concerns about the circulation of the parking lot, so perhaps that was something that the applicant could consider. Uh, 
I, we do want to confirm with the applicant, but I believe the number of parking spaces that would be affected by the grading are a result of the trash enclosure being in the center um, of that row of parking spaces so that they would just regrade up to that uh, trash enclosure. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioner Bourgeois. I'd like to stay on parking for a second. Um, so with, I'll just call it the Hollywood video space, it's being split into two at least. Right, we're looking at just a portion of that. Their, their traffic trips went up, um, which is why they need the community benefit. And they have adequate parking, but proportionally, is it an increase in the required parking so that down the road when another tenant comes for the other half, there might be some parking constraints down the road? I know we're just looking at this, but I'm trying to understand whether the, I know the traffic is up, but are the, is the parking changed proportionally based on square footage? Does that make sense? It does, and you could look at it as it slightly did change proportionally. However, the remaining square footage of the space of the former Hollywood video space that they are not occupying can be occupied with retail without any uh, concerns about parking. Okay, then thank you. Commissioner O'Donnell. Let me just follow up. The, the word that struck me there was retail. Um, this is a, the particular use we're talking about tonight it requires a conditional use permit because it's a restaurant. So are you suggesting that by approving this tonight, the parking remaining will be such that a restaurant for the remaining portion could not be approved? No, however, they would be limited to a certain number of seats based on the remaining parking spaces. Well, this restaurant has 40 seats, which includes inside and outside. And assuming for the moment that the remaining portion is equal to the former portion, are you saying it would be more or less than 40 spaces for the other re the remaining portion? I can provide you that number in a moment. I would have to do the calculation. Okay, I'm just trying to get, I, I, I don't need an exact number. I'm just okay. trying, is it gonna be more or less or do you know? I can know in a few minutes. Okay, thank you. Other questions at this time? If not, we would invite the applicant, ask you to eventually turn in the card and to the recording secretary and introduce yourself and address and you have five minutes. And it's timed, I see. My name's Harlan Faust, I'm an architect and I'm a consultant for Chipotle Mexican Grill. My address is 14344 Y Street, Omaha, Nebraska, 68137. Um, as Jennifer said, we're here to apply for a ch uh, conditional use permit, and the way it was defined to us, the conditional use permit was required because we're changing the use from a retail use to a restaurant use. We're taking approximately 3,100 square feet of the Hollywood video and converting that to a restaurant. Uh, by virtue of discussions with the planning staff, we discussed the parking issues at great length. Uh, our original application was going to show approximately 76 seats, and because of the available parking that was available on site and taking into consideration the, park, or the parking that would be required for the retail, we were limited to 40 seats total. And it was our decision by our client to allocate a certain number of those seats or um, the allocation or the proportion to four outdoor seats and the balance of them would be indoor. If you look at the floor plan, you'll also notice we've taken out a great deal of the square footage of that 3,100 square feet and it will not be used and the reason is that because of the size of the space, we don't need that. Uh, and also because we had cut down the seating from 76 down to the 40 total. Uh, the conditional use permit is asking for the change of use and also for permission for it to sell alcohol as well. Um, the report that was written by the planning staff is we're filing for a type 47 liquor license. Uh, Chipotle only sells beer and they do sell margaritas, but it's a complimentary item on the menu for the restaurant, it's not a bar. And from my experience in dealing with Chipotle on percentages, liquor sales only amount to three quarter of a percent to a percent of the total sales. When you go into a Chipotle restaurant, you'll see that it's not a highly advertised item. It's a uh, complimentary item on the menu for those individuals that want to uh, consume alcohol during their meals. Um, patio seating, since there's no railing and by virtue of California liquor license law, we won't be serving alcohol on the outdoor patio and the staff has been trained to control that to make sure that alcohol does not leave the premises. Um, I believe most of the other information is in the report, so I'm open to uh, any questions that the chair might have or any of the board members. 
Thank you very much. Commissioner Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Faust. One of the questions I had, and I have visited um, the location, and I, I was very familiar with it, but today I went back there again and uh, took a look, and you, you answered my question about no railing um, around the patio seating. Uh, however, if I look at the schematic, and I have two questions, one just happens to do with the seating. The schematic has um, the, the seating stops before those big um, pots. Is that, is that what I'm looking at here? Yes, the seating will be right up adjacent to the storefront. So it's right space. there at the window mm -hmm. is, is what you're saying. Would you say that, um, that the seating then is similar to the seating for uh, Jamba Juice a few doors down? Well, yeah, it's similar to theirs, but the advantage that we have is there's a lot more space between our storefront and the parking curb. When I've been there, those seats have been mobile. They've moved closer to the parking curb, and sometimes when I've been on property, they've actually inhibited walking through there. In our case, that won't be true. Well, this, th that was, you got my concern, was how people were going to walk uh, around the tables. There's 17 feet from the edge of our table to the curb, so there should be plenty of clearance for them to maneuver around that to gain access to our restaurant. And then how many feet between your table and those big, huge pots? That's mm, all I was, I, I, was I was trying to determine if people would be inclined to walk closer to the seats or they would be inclined to walk around the big um, pots, which puts them near the curb. That, that, that's just visually what I was trying to determine about that patio seating. There's one uh, planning group that we don't show on our plan that's closer to being in front of Pier 1. They'd probably walk around that and then come towards the door, so they'd probably walk between that seating and that, that planter. They're coming from, I believe that's the north, or from the west. Okay. Um, then if I could just move you on to, um, I noticed that you, you commented about the unused space, and I noticed that that space is actually what faces out to uh, Blossom Hill Road. Mm -hmm. So how, uh, what, what is the plan of Chipotle to, um, for all that window space? If you see on that plan, you'll notice there's a door close to the rear exit door that goes into that area between what would be a wall and the glass. Our intent is to do a mural or some kind of a uh, presentation for Chipotle, a product shot or something of that nature. So the people looking, walking by on the sidewalk or driving by from the outside would not be able to see into that vacant space. But they would see some signage for Chipotle. It wouldn't be, well, it'd be, it'd be, by definition, probably a product shot or some image of a uh, Chipotle burrito or a table setting of something, some sort of like that. It would not be a Chipotle sign where it says Chipotle Mexican Grill. Well, uh, you're leading me right into my question, which happens to be the signage. And so I was concerned about what this mural would look like to the people on the street. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not finished with that, but I want to move on to the signage. I don't see anything on your plans about signage. We were asked to specifically remove signage from the presentation because that's handled under a separate permit mm -hmm. and is handled by ordinance or by uh, sign criteria for the shopping center. For uh, my edification, could you tell me what your plans are, though, for the, the signage? Uh, our intent is to have two signs, one which would face back towards the parking lot and then another one that would be mounted on the rotunda or the round portion of that corner. They use a product called the push-through sign. It's a uh, individual letter sign that has, has backing. Uh, it's, it's a constructed cabinet, but when you see it, the sign reads as individual letters. So where we see the huge Hollywood video, we now will see a Chipotle sign up there? We'll be asking for a portion of that, yes. Okay, well, you answered my questions. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Bourgeois. Thank you. Um, wow, I forgot my question. Can you come back to me? <laughs> Commissioner O'Donnell. I'll give you a minute to think, John. Well, I, I, just out of curiosity, you, you are serving hard alcohol, as I understand, in, in a margarita. Correct. So you have a liquor, you will get a liquor license. Hopefully we'll be able to. What kind of liquor it. license will you get? I, I've never heard of a, a margarita liquor license. 
Well, it's not a margarita liquor license. I it's type 47 so, liquor license that so allows beer and, and wine and hard alcohol. So from a license standpoint, you can serve any kind of hard alcohol. Correct. But from a condition, you're only asking us to approve uh, beer, wine, and margaritas. Is that I'm not even asking for the wine because they don't serve wine. Beer and margaritas is all they serve. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner, can I address, you brought up the question about the parking. Um, I want to make sure that you understand. Hold on, let's, let's see if other commissioners have a question first. Okay, yeah, I remembered mine. Okay, Thank Commissioner you. Uh, It was about alcohol. So I, I've been to Chipotle restaurants. I've never realized that they served alcohol. So is this, <laughs> is this something that occurs in the majority of your restaurants? Mm -hmm. There's a few states because of the price of the liquor license they don't sell. New Mexico is one of them that I'm familiar with. And there are special occasions when they're close to schools or youth activities. They will not sell alcohol. But since you've been to a restaurant, you can see they do not push it. It's not advertised. Yeah, I had no idea. And when, you'll, when you enter a new restaurant, which this one will be the new design, it will be listed on the menu board. But the only place you'll see it is there's a small display case that's at counter height or lower, a refrigerator with a glass door. That's the only place you would see it. And as many times as I've been in restaurants and doing these, I've been doing them for 12 years, I've never seen anybody consume alcohol in a Chipotle. And so what about service outside? No. And, and so would not be alcohol would not be allowed to be taken to the outside seating? No. Okay. Thank you. Chipotle has a very detailed training regimen that they go through, not only for food production, but also for alcohol and how to handle that. And that part, that is a high concern of theirs. They, they're friendly neighbors. They want to remain that way as well. Commissioner Dahl. I think you were going to give us an answer to a question that perhaps we don't recall, but you were going to respond, <laughs> I think, to my discussion, our questions about the parking, I'll call it enlargement. Is that what you wanted to yeah, talk about? Yeah, try to clarify so at least I'll assume that I've asked you that question and go ahead and answer it. Uh, when we first met Jennifer and the other planners, the issue of parking came up and the ratio of parking that we were going to be allowed with the number of seats that we had. So I made several trips to the site trying to investigate whatever opportunities that we could, could uh, explore to try to gain parking. We had talked to planning staff about different types of parking stalls, subcompact versus full-size cars. Uh, we talked about one of the things planning staff suggested was to uh, poll the neighbors to see if there'd be an opportunity to possibly gain parking off-site on adjacent parcels. So I met with the Acura dealership and talked to them about it. <clears throat> I didn't think there would be much chance, and, and he confirmed that their parking lot is fairly full with new car display, used car display, as well as their customers. So we went back to the site itself, and I didn't realize that's not much of a gain, but uh, for whatever reason, I think Hollywood Video had in their lease that they had to have a loading or unloading area. So we did gain one parking stall. When you first enter the side, in front of Hollywood Video, you'll see a striped area with a ramp that comes up onto the sidewalk. We're going to regain that as one parking stall. One of the other things that planning staff had mentioned is that because of the way the property has been configured, especially along the Acura dealership, cars can't always pull all the way into their stall. And so circulation sometimes in the drive lane is, a, uh, is an issue. So by virtue of conversation we had with planning, one of the things we suggested we agreed to it was for computer development was to go back and uh, rework that landscaping area so cars could fully use those stalls to gain a little bit more width in that drive aisle. So we are going to gain one parking stall and hopefully we'll gain a little bit better circulation by virtue of widening the drive lane itself. Let me make sure I understand then. When you say you're going to uh, do something to the landscaping to allow, I, I take a car to get all the way back in. What does that mean? Are you just going to trim landscaping or what? No. If you, when you go out and look at the site, and it sounds like one of the board members looked there today, you'll notice when you pull up to the curb, the grade has been built up. And maybe it was that way right from the beginning. So if you had pull in, you would actually scrape your uh, uh, license plate or the bumper, and it doesn't allow that car to fully enter into that, into that stall. Uh, common design criteria for a parking stall is you're required to have a certain depth from the curb to the back of the stall. And then two, you're allowed anywhere from a foot and a half or two foot overhang, depending on zoning ordinance. Well, right now, at least on the stalls that we're looking at improving from the street back to the trash enclosure area, there's probably 50% of those 
that people can't pull in and look at or can't get full access to that stall. Now there may be a couple of them that we may not be able to uh, fix because there's parking standards poles uh, with the, the uh, base of it right up against the curb. I also noticed there's some uh, uh, irrigation uh, controls uh, depending on if we can sink those back down into the ground a little bit, then we'll be able to get that as well. So it's, it's more of improvement of circulation, not gaining additional parking stalls. Uh, um, thank you. I, I think I understand it now, but uh, just from a counting standpoint, that is, uh, I appreciate that that's a fairly long distance that you've offered to do something with. Um, and I also appreciate you may have some problems, but do you have an approximation as to how many of the parking spaces, and I didn't count them, from the, from the uh, entrance street to the uh, recycle bin will actually be able to improve? 29 stalls. So including the limitations you talked about being subtracted out, about 29 spaces? Well, if we do it, looked at it that way, probably uh, 28, 27 or 28. Okay. Thank you very much. Commissioner Sayok. Just for my own um, curiosity, when when Chipotle was considering the site, um, you obviously felt that that was this was a desirable location for you. And so, could you just share with me some of the some of the key issues why this is desirable? The context I'm looking at is that there are several, I guess, Mexican chains already in the area. And so, do you see that as as competition? Do you see that as something that encourages other consumers to go to you? Just some thoughts on on it would be great. I'll try. I'm the architect, not the real estate manager. I do know that they've been looking at Los Gatos for quite some time because of the um, employment, the economic um, situation that you have in Los Gatos. It's very desirable. They found from other restaurants that they have in the San Francisco and Bay Area that by virtue of their model that the store could be successful. Uh, Having been a restaurant owner myself, I know that anytime that you have a restaurant and you place it next to another food service, there is competition for food dollar, whether it's uh, by virtue of the, I can't remember the burrito shop that's across the street, but th there's a burrito shop that's in the shopping center across the street. Uh, whether there's direct competition or not, yeah, I would say there is because it's a similar food product. But Chipotle is very confident in this location because of the traffic count by the population, the economics of the city of Los Gatos. And by virtue of that, that particular location with the mix that you have Starbucks, Jamba Juice, those are things that they evaluate when they look at a, at a location. And I think they're like most national chains. They have an economic model that they run, and they input certain information. And by virtue of that, it gives them a, a measure of what the possibility for success for that store is. I'll give you another example. Uh, as I mentioned before, when we first presented this, our intent was to have 76 seats in this restaurant. Now there's some miscommunication that we had with a permit technician here at the city. That was what we were originally told we'd be able to have for seating. Uh, I told Jennifer when it came out that we were only gonna have 40 that I really doubted whether Chipotle would move forward because that, to go from a 3,100 square foot space that would seat 76 down to a 3,100 square foot space that seats 40 has to have a strong impact on the bottom line. But after I described what we were faced with with the parking and uh, the other situation, other issues that were brought up, Chipotle decided to continue to go forward. So they have a lot of confidence in this site. Commissioner Smith. I just have a couple of follow-ups, if I could, and I understand that you're the architect, um, but I am gonna ask you a, a question about the parking and the takeout business of Chipotle, because uh, one of the reasons why Hollywood Video had um, they had rapid turnover uh, of cars. Does Chipotle expect that? I mean, in other words, do, do you expect a lot of takeout business and people are running up, picking up, leaving immediately? It's a strong part of their business, yes. Uh, what percentage it is of the business, I'm not sure. But I do know in locations that we've done for Chipotle that are in similar circumstances where parking may be limited, um, it is a big portion of their business, yes. And so when you do this uh, grading and you um, narrow that berm is what I'm, what I'm envisioning, maybe I'm, I'm incorrect when you say that landscaping, but I think of you as, as widening the parking 
lot. Am I correct? No. The no. parking lot's going to stay the same configuration. All we're going to do is we're going to better utilize those parking stalls along the Acura dealership. So the curb line that's there now will remain where it's at. It's just that we're going to lower the grade where those cars would overhang so they'll be able to get completely into that stall. I, I just think at the opposite end of that area, which is a Starbucks, and in the morning anyone who's visited there knows that this backing in and out, in and out, in and out, it, it's very dangerous in that parking lot. I mean, for pedestrians as well as uh, cars. So um, that's why I asked you about your takeout business there, uh, because that means lots of cars backing up in and out. Um, I can I can make my comments about the signage. I think after we close this hearing, but I am going to make some comments. Thank you. I have one quick question All right. for you. Condition number seven in exhibit number three actually says that the services for beer, wine, and margaritas it presumably wouldn't be necessary to include wine. Is that correct? I apologize. I was flipping. No, that's through. okay. Could you the, the question? It says so. The alcoholic service that's provided for in the draft conditions of approval provides for beer, wine, and margaritas. There's no particular. There's no reason to include wine, if I understand Correct. correctly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, let me. I, I think this is probably a question of staff because um, we're talking about. I think in, in, our, in our report, beer, wine, and, and alcoholic beverages. What the applicant is asking for, of course, is beer and uh, what basically is tequila for margaritas. I don't know that we have any particular power if we approve. I, I don't know what the limit is of what we're approving. If they say they're not approving, for, asking for wine, I believe them. But is that a, a limitation we ought to put on, or is that a licensing issue? license they will get, as I understand it, will say beer, wine, and hard alcohol. Uh, can I clarify? Let, let me find out from staff, please. Uh, the conditional use permits on the conditional, u the conditions for the conditional use permit will be more strict, and the applicant, the operation would be separate to those regulations that are more strict. So, and I apologize for not knowing the answer to this. I'm sure it's there. So we would say beer and I guess we'd say margaritas, but as I, I assume that's, well, I don't know what you, I know you put tequila in margaritas, maybe you put something else too, but so it, we're going to say beer and margaritas. Right now the condition reads beer, wine, and margaritas. Okay, the fact that they're not asking for wine, does that lead us to believe we need to delete wine or just we don't care? You could delete wine, should you choose. Uh, but uh, no, that's fine, I don't really care, so <laughs> I just wanted to know. Thank you. Can I comment on that? Um, w when we finish with the public, w you'll have a chance to comment okay. further. Are there any more? Thank you. So there are members of the public who would like to address the commission on the issue. Apparently not. So you have three minutes to rebut anything from the public. <laughs> I won't even take the three minutes. I believe the reason it states beer, wine, and, and alcohol, or um, however, margaritas, whatever it does say, is the Type 47 license that we would obtain from the state of California would allow us to sell those items. What I'm saying is they don't serve wine on the menu. So if you wanted to restrict it, that should not be an issue with Chipotle. Can I ask you a follow-up question? Sure. But it would it would allow you to serve other things made with distilled spirits other than margaritas, also. Correct. Yeah. So there would. So we need to decide what we want to restrict it from, if we want to restrict it at all, more than the license will permit you to. Yes, ma'am. Just as a fur further clarification from Commissioner O'Donnell's original question, generally, um, Commission couldn't impose its own conditions on a license obtained by another agency, in this case, ABC. However, um, this applicant, like other applicants, have offered to voluntarily restrict the conditions of their license 
and there is nothing that prevents the Planning Commission or the town from accepting something where they're offering a restriction we're not asking or imposing. And I think that's the distinction here that we've allowed other applicants to come forward before the Commission and offer more restrictive conditions than they may be allowed. Let me ask a question about that. Do we, given what you just said, then are we restricted to limiting it to what they have suggested as opposed to some, something else, which is, so they've not suggested a limitation of beer, wine, and margaritas? Just for clarification, maybe you want to ask the applicant that question again. So what do you want the restriction to be restricted to? We'd be happy with restricting, restricting it to the sale of beer and margaritas. Whoops, can we take that as their request? Yes, since they've offered to further restrict, they know what their license that they will apply for or have applied for, and they are offering that they're willing to offer to the town a further restriction um, and you could incorporate that offer and that voluntary offer into the conditions if the Commission so desires. Any further questions for the applicant? Thank you. Thanks. The uh, chair is open for further discussion by the commissioners or a motion. Thank you, Mr. O'Donnell. We need to formally close the public hearing. Public portion. A, an obvious chair in training. <laughs> Commissioner Smith. Uh, the comments that I want to make actually have to do with the whole corner, and I'm not sure if I'm making these comments more to staff or the public or uh, Mr. Faust here, but what I do want to say is that um, that is a very unusual building uh, for Los Gatos, and uh, the signage, the huge Hollywood video sign up there has always seemed out of place. And I, what I uh, like about that building is that um, the, the signage of Pier 1 and the rest of them seems to be, and I'm just going to use my lay term of softened, you know, it's not doesn't scream at you as you're driving down that, that there's all of that there. So I know signage is not part of tonight, but it really it matters to me how Chipotle uh, sign is going to be on top of that cupola and what that mural is going to look like. So I just want to throw that out that um, you've, you've had them not address it specifically here tonight, but it, it does... Um, I, I think it's very important on that corner that we pay attention to that. That's my I comment. Thank you. I assume the staff will take Commissioner Smith's comments back as they work through the process of the sign permit. Um, yes, and it's, the signage is um, restricted by the town code and our commercial design guidelines. And in terms of the mural on the window, you're only allowed to have 25% um, of that window um, be signage. So we'll, we'll work with them. We have not, as my understanding, we have not seen any plans for the signs at this time. But, yep. Okay, but we'll, we'll deal, yes, we will take that in consideration. Commissioner Sayak. And, and the staff takes that into consideration. I'd also like to second that, uh, um, especially the location of the signage. I think, as Commissioner Smith said, the, the dome is such an unusual feature in our town and so to place less emphasis away from that would be the ideal situation and so when you consider signage that would be that would be something that I'd like for you to consider Commissioner Bourgeois just to clarify with staff we're since alcohol is involved we're only making a recommendation to town council at this time is that correct correct I'd like to go ahead and make a motion I'd like to recommend approval of the conditional use permit based on the testimony we've heard today and the summary that's been in the staff report on its compatibility with the different goals and policies in the, the general plan. For those reasons, I can find that the proposed project is categorically exempt pursuant to section 15301 of CEQA. 
and uh, I can make the required findings as outlined in section 292190 of the town code for granting approval of a conditional use permit and therefore I recommend approval to the town council council of this conditional use permit U-11-016. I'd like to make a couple of comments and changes. Uh, one, I would like to strike the word wine from uh, item uh, condition seven in exhibit three. Uh, I think we heard very clearly from the applicant that they were uh, offering this. Their, their main interest at all of their restaurants is beer and margaritas. So I'd like to have that changed. And then I would just like to add um, my comments to the sign issue. I think this is a, obviously a corner that's of great sensitivity to all of us. And so I think you've heard from enough commissioners that we'd, we'd like to see that done very tastefully. So that's my motion. And that last comment's not a condition, it's just a comment. I'll second. second from Commissioner O'Donnell. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Uh, opposed? The motion passes 5-0. And there are no appeal rights, it's just a recommendation. Correct. We can move on to report from the, from Ms. Bailey. Okay. Um, I only have one thing to report regarding the town council, um, the Bella Vista applications for the two single family residences, um, where the planning commission had denied that. That um, applicant did appeal those decisions and it went to town council. And the council did uphold the decision of the planning commission and denied the appeals. And then at the last planning commission meeting, um, just to follow up um, regarding um, Oleander, and I'm more discussing regarding the undergrounding of the utilities, um, as um, prior to, or subsequent to the action taken by the commission, there was some request from the engineering department to have some follow-up discussion um, regarding the undergrounding of utilities, regarding the, um, future applications, what we should, how we should proceed with those. But subsequent to the meeting, um, planning and engineering discussed the matter, and we determined that the findings that the commission made were um, very site-specific and adequate, and that we could use those for future applications. So we do not believe that we need to have any more discussion with the commission. And that's it. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. Any questions about her report? Any other matters from members of the commission? Commissioner Bourgeois. Thank you. Um, I think was since our last meeting, I'm not exactly sure the date, but the mayor had called a meeting uh, with the chairs of the commissions and committees. And as chair of the general plan committee, I was invited, but I was not able to make it because it was on a Tuesday in the middle of the day. I'm just wondering if anything came out of that meeting. Uh, I believe Commissioner Erickson, you were there as chair of historic preservation. I'm assuming Commissioner Jensen was there. I just want to know if there was anything reportable out of that meeting that that we should, as a commission, know about? Um, I'll give it a whirl. Um, would try not to speak for either the town manager, the town attorney, or the mayor. But um, the it was really an um, opportunity, as, as I understand it, f to cover kind of with the chairs of the various commissions and committees um, a reminder of how meetings should be conducted and so forth. It was not, there was no expression of concern about that there were any problems to be solved or anything like that, but really just kind of a reminder about how to conduct meetings and that kind of stuff. Also, there was discussion about um, how um, how there might be, like, so what I would call cross fertilization between the various committees. In other words, if, if if topics came up, for example, in front of the Parks and Parks Commission or the Traffic and Parking Committee, that might be relevant to the Planning Commission. For example, how those kinds of issues might flow back and forth when appropriate to do that. Um, also, there was a, a question about the um, the strategic goals, I believe they're called, in front of the council for a year and how how could each of the commissions and committees relate to those and how are they contributing to them and how they might be updated on progress toward them that were that was relevant to them and I and there was also an opportunity to talk about how what was going on with each 
committee and commission, although in the case of the planning commission, as Marsh, as uh, Chair Jensen reported, the planning commission is more in a reactive mode with agendas that are created for it as opposed to some, uh, most of the rest of the, the uh, committees and commissions are. So I think, I, and I guess, Ms. Prop was there, anything else that was covered that I missed of consequence? Um, just to clarify that both the mayor and the vice mayor participated in that um, process and shared some of their thoughts on the process and public meeting and public participation. There was a discussion of the council um, policies of code of conduct and then um, I think uh, Chair, Vice Chair Erickson covered most of the other matters. Okay, thank you. Other questions or Commissioner Sayat? I have some just information sharing. Um, <clears throat> some of you may be aware that the Los Gatos Union School District Board last night voted to not improve, uh, con to proceed with construction plans for Lexington School and that um, primarily due to the seismic issues up there. But um, one of the issues that they are now facing is where to house the 200 plus people up there, students as well as faculty. And right now some of the considerations look at, are looking at placing them in portables at Fisher. And so I thought that would be important news to share with commissioners though. Commissioner O'Donnell. I understand that they have nevertheless referred out a $5,000 study to still that they can meet with the state. Apparently the state had raised an issue about the seismic situation with that school. And it doesn't look good, I guess. But they haven't totally given up yet because they have authorized a meeting with the state of California to see if there's anything that can be done. But I think you're summation is probably nevertheless correct. Correct. Um, in October, they authorized, I believe it was 300,000 to look at, basically have another world to see what they could do with the, with the state of California. Those results and the geologist report y yesterday showed that it was not likely to have a favorable view. And so at last night's meeting, the board actually voted to stop with that route and um, I think uh, Commissioner Erickson, you were also there, but there was some discussion of whether using some funds to continue talks with California, but for the large majority of Measure E, uh, the vote was to no longer proceed in that direction. I guess the only thing that I would add to it, my sense was, and this is just my sense as a citizen, not a member of the Planning Commission, um, was that the, the reason why they continued on, Commissioner O'Donnell, with the, with the potential of continuing the conversation with CGS was because, the as I understood, the direction that the board gave the staff was, or the, the nature of the motion was to include future plans for that site, whether it was for a school or some other use by the district, um, to blend that into a longer range planning project, which they have, so they will need my, my understanding, they would need to know what the answer from CGS was in terms of how more clearly what they could do with the site. That was at least, that's my interpretation of what was going on, which is because at, at one point I was trying to understand if they were gonna, if they were gonna cease investing money in it, why would they go to the CGS and ask them for opinion about it? But then I had an aha moment for myself, which was, oh, they're gonna do something potentially in the future with that site, because they own the property, so they would either have to dispose of the property or do something with it, whether it was develop a school there or something else, so I assume that's why. Okay. Um, and also I wanna clarify, um, as Commissioner Erickson did, that I was strictly there as a participant and uh, was in no shape, form, representing the commission in any manner. Any other Commission matters. If not, we're happy to adjourn before eight o'clock.